Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. <laughs> Exceptions and blunders happen all the time. Sometimes they happen to people, and sometimes they happen within software. In Java, when something goes wrong, you will see an exception. And if things are very bad, your users will be seeing that. So today I will be talking about some very common anti-patterns, and I will wrap things up with some kind of best practices and patterns to follow make a little bit better software and by the way if you have seen any of these in the wild let me know in the comments section i would love to hear if you can relate to what i will show you so let's start with the code i will be showing a little bit of java code uh, but many of the principles will apply to any language that uses exceptions the code example i have here is just straight copy uh, from a stack overflow answer to how to do how to do uh, file reading how to read strings from a file I have modified it just slightly uh, so it's able to read its own source code and print it out on the screen. We can see anti-pattern number one here already. Can you guess what is anti-pattern number one? It's the try and catch all and print uh, to somewhere. <laughs> so I've actually seen this out in the wild once. It was a horrible experience. There was a Java servlet, about thousand lines of code. It was wrapped inside a huge try catch block. And uh, when something went wrong, anything, the handling was the same. Print it in the console. In other words, print it in the logs that nobody is watching, monitoring. So hide it, essentially. And uh, user will see nothing. So there is no mechanism to kind of deliver this to user interface. So it's like catch and kind of hide it. You will leave a little bit of traces, but it will be very difficult to find it. So. This is my number one anti-pattern that I hate to see. Uh, people are wrapping uh, a block of code that might, might have some exceptions to take care of, and uh, uh, people will then catch it all in one block, uh, print it on the console. Uh, by the way, I have deliberately created a little bit of structure here, so you have to use a little bit of imagination because I don't have a lot of code here. So what I'm saying applies mostly to Java backend code, so I'm thinking about servlets or some uh, data engineering solution, anything that gets to run deep in the server, um, and it will probably have a separate user interface. I'm kind of simulating it here, but there's not much to it. So if you have a front-end, back-end kind of situation, front-end uh, enjoys a little bit different patterns, but in the back-end, back-end uh, is, is where, where I'm kind of going through these examples. Okay, good so far, or very bad. So imagine if this kind of thing was a, a larger block of code with much more scenarios that can go wrong and you would be trying to catch all and have a unified, do pretty much nothing behavior for that one. On top of this one, it's rather easy for me to explain pattern number two, because pattern number two is even worse. And that's catch all, do nothing. Believe me, I've seen this stuff in production code. Unfortunately, I've seen this stuff in code that was handed for me to uh, further develop and maintain. There was, this was just one of the things that were very, very wrong there. Now, I've heard some people claim that there might be a valid case to use this one. I agree, perhaps in 1% of those cases, there might be a reason. But most of the time, hell no, hell no, there's no reason unless you can somehow recover from this one. In that case, if you are dealing with some horrible legacy stuff anyway, and you have means to recover, perhaps perhaps then you can kind of hide, hide all traces. But typically we would at least, <laughs> even the anti-pattern number one would be superior to this one, because you're pretty much trying to hide any traces that even anything happened, and it's impossible to do any investigations afterward. And especially combined with this horrible part catch everything pretty much everything that goes wrong this is very very kind of this is among the top three most horrible anti-patterns i've seen anti-pattern number three is a little bit related but we do have to change the uh, source code so just a second i have an example for this one so anti-pattern number three is catch and return null let me explain it so we have a function here Task to do something, uh, we are catching either all of the exceptions or some doesn't really matter because uh, this is the problem here. 
So if something goes wrong and we have a function that returns something, I've seen some people panic and they are like, I, I do have to do something here, otherwise the function is broken. So what they will do is uh, return null. Just to get out of that error. And again, this is horrible anti-pattern. So in addition to hiding the root cause of the problem, what people are doing here is they are returning a null that kind of trickles further up in the in the call chain and uh, it will cause more exceptions runtime type of exceptions or um, it will cause complexity because people have to kind of prepare for the fact that there might be null that actually means there was an error that we deliberately chose to hide so very horrible by the way all of these i've seen in production code even this year i've seen some of these take place in some code uh, it's typically not written by me, but in the 90s, <laughs> I needed money. I was young, so I did some of these. But I've been trying to do better, so that's why I'm going through this kind of video explaining these to you in the hopes that uh, you will catch even one bad habit and keep uh, doing it. So don't do it. Just do the better ones. By the end of the video, I will be dropping some better ones. And by the way, if you at any point like the video, like the content, like the humor here, uh, drop me a like, uh, drop me some comments, uh, spread the link to your buddies, it will make all the difference, thank you. So I have uh, more anti-patterns to share unfortunately, let's go deeper. So what's going on here, this is not as bad as all the others, this is uh, quite bad still, but not as horrible, so I would say top three is really horrible, never do that, and if you are reviewing somebody else's code, have that chat and discussion of what have you been smoking or what what have you been meaning to do here why on earth are you doing this in a civilized way of course so here is my anti-pattern for a little bit less nasty but still quite kind of stupid so we are catching anything that goes wrong that's an anti-pattern in itself because we are like hiding the details of what's going on here and then we are pretending that we have a universal handling for this one and the universal handling is to throw a runtime exception. Um, this would deserve a video of its own, but in Java language specifically, there's two types of exceptions. So we have the uh, checked exceptions and then we have runtime exceptions. So uh, the first type you have to handle, you're mandated to handle, and then we have the optional to handle. So some people kind of catch this one and then they throw uh, optional to handle exception and then they manage to hide again all the uh, kind of type information what they are actually expecting to happen here and uh, this will cause a little bit performance hit so i'm not a big fan of kind of thinking about performance and exceptions because in my mind number one priority is ability to understand and read the code by anybody who knows their basic java so clarity is number one priority and good exceptions uh, might even help with that However, however, in this case, it's like unnecessary cost to make things worse. So, so really, don't do catch, uh, catch uh, and uh, rethrow or catch log and throw in this case. Okay, then we are diving to the deep end again. So let's do next anti-pattern. This would be number five. Number five, I would call like a pizza uh, toppings of sa multiple salami slices. So we have multiple exception handling blocks going on here. I've seen people do this, and by the way, IDEs might guide you towards this unless you know what you are doing. So if you are very novice and start writing code and then you figure out that, oh no, I need to do some exception handling here. And then uh, you have this nice light bulb going on. And there's like surround with try catch. Okay, okay. So uh, this will guide you towards doing these uh, micro blocks or a lot of those and uh, the end result here is again quite horrible you are making a lot of mess here this is again very severe anti-pattern to do it like so because you have problem with execution flow in 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 kind of addition to being very cluttered code so we have something going on here and it might fail okay if it fails this value uh, this variable is initialized to null and then we are not stopping the execution here. We are just logging it and continuing. So here we will get more exceptions. When we carry on and we trust for this variable to be initialized, it's not and you get new exceptions. 
and then your log is cluttered with uh, what seems like separate separate exceptions you will get a lot of kind of noise and it becomes very difficult to understand what's the root cause again so this kind of thing um, we are combining two scenes so one is uh, separating things that should happen together and succeed together we are we are chopping them to slices uh, complicating unnecessarily by adding more control structures and then we are messing with the execution flow because we are letting the code kind of pass the exceptions and try to do more while we already know it's not going to happen it's not going to work so very bad that's my uh, number five anti-pattern but i have more number six two more i promise then we get to the better side how to do things a little bit better stay tuned for that because it's going to be short and sweet anti-pattern number six what's wrong here well uh, everything that was wrong with the original one plus a bit more nested so i've seen people do this in <laughs> believe me i kid you not this is production code stuff that i've seen people do with java i don't know what's going on there but uh, they are having uh, exception handling and then they are wrapping that in another exception handling block so now it gets really cluttered and we really like side effect it goes very crazy here. So, mm -mm -mm. any kind of forensics and understanding what went wrong is like lost here. So, I think this is like resume driven development model where you deliberately create very obscure code and arcane go code that only you know how to fix. And then your reward is that uh, you will never get fired because you have to stay there fixing this mess all the time and your punishment is that you have to fix this mess all the time the last one of my anti-patterns today this this cover quite a lot not all but quite a lot of the scenes so what we have here is try catch then try again <laughs> so oh dear oh dear god we have a try catch scene already here we we do try catch and then catch anything that goes wrong then we have another scene here we're logging and then we are doing the try catch again so what's going on again we are combining multiple scenes we have nested try catch uh, we have this catch everything try catch we are logging multiple times the same problem so uh in, in kind of uh, unrelated way so we are instead of getting nice stack trace explaining what's the root cause we are getting multiple ones and it gets very difficult to see where it went wrong and this is just pure evil to to include nested things you don't again there might be one percent where you have to do this and it makes sense probably dealing with some horrible legacy code but for the rest of the time um, there is a better way and this is kind of nice segue to the rest of my talk so i have some kind of insights how to do better i will explain them first and then i will show you some code so explanation how should you handle the exceptions properly it's actually very very easy number one care about your resources so always make sure you close your resources properly and by resources i mean something heavyweight that you actually need to remember to release so in all my examples there was a, a little bit of uh, io code and with io code whether it's file handling network code whatever um, you should really remember to close things because otherwise you might get corrupted files, uh, all kinds of side effects, uh, hanging network sockets. Java tries to be able to release resources, but uh, in, in, in every case it's not possible and you might end up with resource exhaustion. So you run out of something. So this is um, often cause for very, very weird uh, bugs and exceptions that typically take place once you have built a lot of code. So every time you are needing to do try catch block in java typically has to do with some resource that you really need to remember to close and there's two ways to do that i will show you shortly in a code number two if you don't know to hand how to handle exception don't handle it sometimes the best exception handling is to not handle it at all uh, let it bubble instead if you really want want to catch the exception be specific so uh, if you do try catch don't do that catch everything unless you are in that again one percent scenario 
where that makes sense for your application. Most of the time it doesn't. And even if you believe it does, it still doesn't. So that's kind of my unofficial rule. Even if you believe you're right, you're still wrong. But I, I admit there is actually, for every one of these rules, there's that 1% where uh, you are doing something really weird and you have to break the rules. Otherwise, follow these simple rules. So close the resources, take care of your resources, close them properly, always, whether there's exceptions or not, always close them. Uh, let them bubble if, if it's not the time yet to handle them. And finally, if it's time to catch them, then catch them, but be specific. And always leave good traces, not multiple traces, but a nice kind of uh, tracing in the logs that's somehow attached to what the user is seeing, so you can trace it later. Um, I will do a separate video on that, by the way. Uh, there's more to error handling than just exceptions. And finally, um, hierarchies and types might be your friend. This is kind of an area where I'm not very, very uh, rigidly uh, opinionated. But sometimes it makes sense to create an exception hierarchy because exceptions are types as well. So throwing your own custom exception might give you nice opportunity to document what is expected to go wrong, document it a little bit, explain it with a name and a little bit of Java doc perhaps. So that might be a beneficial or might not. Uh, that's your call. But let's go back to code. I wanted to demonstrate these principles. I have uh, taken the previous code and I have two versions of that one. First one is uh, quite recent level. So this is combining what you have available in Java 17. So what we are doing here, we have the same old read file method. What we are doing here is uh, try with resources block. It's not even demanding Java 17. This has been around for some time, but it's a little bit matter of taste and uh, scenario. So in this scenario, it means I do try and then I define my resources here. And then Java is able to figure out that these implement the closable interface. So it will take care of closing these, uh, whether there is exceptions or not, whether you are handling them or throwing them. A very neat way of doing things in most of the cases. There might be scenarios where this is not okay for you. And in that case, you can call the uh, go to the legacy style, which is here. The legacy style is to do try block. You don't need to do catch. You can do, you can skip it. And then you do finally block. Uh, and you have to add a little bit more. So in case this is null, we try to close it. In case this is null, we try to close it. Unfortunately, this might sometimes trigger more exceptions that you might want to suffocate. So this might sometimes be the 1% rule where you actually have to do try catch and do nothing. Um, very rarely. But if you try to close a resource that's already closed, uh, there is no API to verify it. You have just have to try it. And well, yeah, you can break the rule then. It gets a bit messy. So this one is a bit more, more kind of neat and elegant. And again, in some scenarios, it might be okay to just let it uh, throw, throw and bubble. Uh, we are doing the bubbling principle here. So we can declare that this function will throw these exceptions and then the caller needs to handle them one way or another. And remember that this one is pretending to be kind of the user interface. So we could do proper handling here and uh, bring it up for the user interface. Never uh, too uh, quickly two anti-patterns for the user interface. I will elaborate in another video, but never kind of hide things from the user unless you can recover. And uh, on the other hand, never uh, suffocate user with too much detail. So you sh user should never be exposed. Null pointer exception at line 512. So that doesn't mean anything for them. So what you you will be doing with user is uh, you will be communicating with them how to go onwards. So what kind of problem this is? Is it validation problem? Then exception handling shouldn't take place. Is it uh, something that's probably recoverable if they try again? Then you know what to do with that. Is it something un entirely unexpected that is probably not going to self-heal or self-recover? So uh, then you need to uh, kind of guide the user how to go onwards from there. Should they contact somebody? Uh, should they try again tomorrow? What's the scenario? But never like drop an empty screen or guru meditation or error. There is no error or null pointer exception and throw blah, blah, blah. 
So that's just plain bad. So I tried to keep these uh, short, dish and sweet. I failed today because there was just so many anti-patterns I've seen. But if you managed to watch my video, I'm hoping uh, that you picked up a few that you have perhaps seen and you know to avoid them. And perhaps in the end I've wrapped very kind of quick and simplified version of how to do things properly. Obviously there is much more to it. Uh, let me know if you like to see me dive deeper and do other videos on this one. I have some idea on error handling in general on any language. I will probably do that video later. Subscribe to my channel if you, if you like to be notified of that one and remember the bell icon. But for this week's video we are done so I thank you for following. And see you in the next one. Bye bye. Explaining channel. Opening channel. Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel.